I won't make you watch the whole video before saying yes, it is possible to train an autoencoder with only randomly generated data. And here is how I got to this conclusion. The autoencoder that I decided to test everything on is made of four layers. The first inputs 64 by 64 by 3 and returns 2048. The second layer takes in 2048 and returns 1024 and the third and fourth just mirror those two but in reverse. This means that the original image, which has 64 times 64 times 3 floats of information, gets scaled down to 1024 floats, which is 1 twelfth of the original size, and then back to 12,288 numbers. Weirdly enough, when trying to get it to a high enough performance for this video, I found that using no activation functions resulted in a way better performance than using them. For training, I will be using the Atom Optimizer on a learning rate of 0.0001 and the MSE for the loss. The first test that I ran on it was training on the Coco 2014 validation set, which consists of approximately 40,000 images. This will act as the control group of the experiment. Just to give you a better idea of what they consist of, here are a few examples. When trying different epoch numbers, I found that the network kept getting better and better the more I went, so I ended up just training it for 3000 epochs. Predictably, the results from the network were pretty good for 1 over 12 compression ratio. Of course, it's a little blurry, but overall the colors and the shapes were preserved almost perfectly. After that, I tried training the autoencoder on some random noise images that look something like this. The training parameters were the same here, 3000 epochs, MSE loss, and Adam optimizer with a learning rate of 0.0001. And I generated 40,000 images to train on. Here, the results were far worse. As you can see here, there is a brighter spot in the place of the waterfall, but it's barely distinguished from the other pixels, and besides, there's still a lot more noise in the rest of the image. As you saw, the results from just the random noise were not too impressive. But that makes sense. The autoencoder is supposed to only let through big shapes and patterns, and not waste space on the bottleneck on noise. And in the type A noise images, there are no shapes and distinct color areas that could be remembered. So I tried to train on more complicated images. These ones I will call type B noise. They are generated by first choosing a random background color, then I place squares with a random size, color and position on top. After generating another batch of 40,000 and training for 3,000 epochs, I got these results. As you can see, the images look very good. It's pretty easy to tell what the input images were from the output, the colors are preserved perfectly, and the general shapes are still very clear. The loss on all three examples looks pretty weird. It's mostly staying on zero, but sometimes it jumps to a massive number like 17 and a half for no reason. But it's really not important since all three turned out fine. Here I compared the same image on all three tests. For now, I will be ignoring the type A noise images since it's clear that they didn't work out and only focus on the type B and the control group. As you can see, there's almost no difference. Here I tested some more images, and as you can see, both versions turned out pretty well. In conclusion of this experiment, I have arrived at these points. Firstly, it's definitely possible to train an autoencoder and possibly similar architectures on randomly generated data. 
I still haven't tested it on more complicated convolutional and larger autoencoders, but it seems that the type B noise will also work on them. And secondly, not all data works. Like you saw with the random type A noise, if there are no clear shapes and large monochrome areas that the autoencoder can focus on, it is very hard to get good results. And where can this be useful, you ask? Well, definitely not on image autoencoders. There is so much image data freely available on the internet that the random data is just not worth the hassle. However, this might be useful in 4, 5 and 6 dimensional data because it's not a common format for most tasks. If you get an equivalent to the type B noise in whatever dimension the autoencoder is supposed to work, you might have an easier time. As usual, all the project files are freely available on GitHub and thank you for watching!